So in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a servo to a Netduino. This happens to be a Netduino Plus. And get the server to sweep side to side. Now, these three wires, black is ground, red is voltage, and white is signal. Black is going to go into the one of the two ground pins right here. And then red, of course which is going to be plus 5 volts. There happens to be a plus 5 volts pin right here. And then our signal wire is going to go to the white. And it's going to go over here to pin 9. And voila! The servo is sweeping from side to side. I just wanted to jump ahead and show you it working. If you feel like watching the rest of the video, I'll show you uh, kind of in depth how to get into the uh, Visual Studio and uh, make this program and send it to this Netduino. On my website, I'm going to include a solution for the Netduino Plus, but I'll also have the code that you can just paste into your own program. Whenever you find code snippets on the <clears throat> net they generally just paste in some code and then if you want to use it you have to build your own solution so let's go ahead and just open up Microsoft Visual Studio and we're gonna do a new project and we're gonna select Netduino I happen to have a Netduino Plus here so that's the one I'm gonna select and give it a name, let's call it um, Servo Sweep. And then hit OK. And our main program is right here, it's called program.cs. <coughs> and you can start writing your code here. The code for the servo comes in two pieces. You're going to have some code that goes right in here, but you're also going to have a class. And a class is just basically like <clears throat> a subroutine. It's, it's another piece of code, it's another program that will write code here that references this class program. So we just go over here to our program, or our solution, which we called it Servo Sweep. We're going to right click. We're going to add a new item. Actually, I think you could click class. It's the same thing. That's a quicker way to do it. But you can go add a new item. We're going to add a class. Let's call it servo underscore API. Click Add. So you can see over here we have added this new little class called Servo API. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely delete all this. And I'm going to go to my first piece of code, which is this class we're going to make. Just copy this whole thing. Control C. Control V. So we pasted this code in. You can see up at the beginning here, there's our using, and the namespace is servo underscore API, like we called it over here. What you can do is if you want, you can do a build that makes sure that. Uh, Visual Studio checks checks your code and so far it doesn't have any problems. Okay, so let's go back to our program.cs which is open right here. Let's go look at this second piece of code. So we start with some usings and then the namespace. Let's go ahead and just copy this whole thing. I 
I'm going to go down here and delete <clears throat> from my last bracket all the way up to namespace here. I'm going to paste it, control V, and see this is our, our namespace right here. And here are all these usings. We already have system.threading, the secret labs ones. The one we really need is this servo API. So I'm going to put it up here. And I'm going to delete this stuff because our namespace is servo sweep. <clears throat> That's what our program's called. So we'll go ahead and delete this. Obviously the last guy called it something else. So believe it or not, <clears throat> all of our errors went away. Um, if you have errors, uh, Visual Studio will give you information. Sometimes it's just barely enough information to figure out. You can at least go to the line. <clears throat> It says it's in program.cs, it's in line 12, in line 13, something's going wrong, blah, 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 but anyway. Alright, so our program is good. Um, there's one other thing we need to do, and that is we need to make this project target my Netduino Plus. So we're going to go to Project. And we go to the pro the properties of our project. Our project is called Servo Sweep. Down here on .NET Micro Framework, it is right now. It's going to try to deploy to an emulator, but since I already have I have an actual Arduino plugged in, I can click USB, and I already found the device for me. It says I have a Netduino Plus plugged in. So I'm just going to save everything, save this project if you feel like it. Then all you got to do is hit debug and start debugging. Down here you'll see it's fixing to deploy to this device. And you should see, yep, it's having to reboot the device. And it just started working. So sure, your servo is sweeping. What if you want to do something more interesting? What if you want to attach a potentiometer and sweep the servo back and forth? <clears throat> well, let's go back to our program and stop debugging. I'm going to plug this thing so I don't have to listen to it. So, we have our servo. Right here you can see it's attaching to the pin uh, discrete 9. We need an analog input, so let's go ahead and do analog input. We're going to call it pot for potentiometer. And we're going to say analog input. And it's going to be on pin. And dot g. Um, there's analog zero right there. Let's do that one. We're going to close that. All right. So now. We aren't going to do the same thing. What this was doing is it was uh, counting up to uh, 180. You can see it was going to sleep for 10 milliseconds. Something, something, sleep for 10 milliseconds. I'm going to get rid of just about everything here. The only thing I really want... is that line right there, and that's where the servo is actually setting the value to the servo. So, let's go ahead and go right here. 
So, first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and read this pot. What we're going to do is we're going to define another variable, and it's going to be a integer. And we're going to call it i. Oops. Pretty handy because right down here we'll write i to the servo um, class. So we've got this i, and then we need to do a read. So we're going to do pot, which is our little variable up here that's attached to this pin. And then we're going to do a read. probably need to do pot dot read open close parentheses and then a colon semicolon <clears throat> so let's try it oh let's see what's going on down here it's angry so I just messed this up a little bit what I need to do is I'm declaring this integer and its name is i, and then I set it. Pot.read. If you see this line above, you'll see what I did. I, I missed this new. So pot is a new analog input. And it is happy. Let's go ahead and hit the debug. Okay, now I need to hook up my pot potentiometer. With this potentiometer, you hook up your outermost uh, wires, one of them to ground and one to hot. In this case, I believe the Netduino likes 3 volts for its uh, analog inputs, so we're going to do, we actually have, we'll use this blue wire to ground, and then our other side. We're going to go to this 3 volts over here. And then we'll stab our center tap into analog zero. Start turn it. And what you'll notice is that I just barely turn this oh man, maybe a, an eighth or a sixteenth of a turn and it's gone the whole way. <laughs> the reason is <clears throat> we're taking this value off this analog input and sending it directly to the servo. The servo is expecting a, a number that's between 0 and 180. This number on this analog input is a number between 0 and or 1024. So what we need to do is go ahead and scale this number down. 1, 0, Two four divided by one eighty five point seven. So let's scale this thing. <clears throat> what we need to do is stop debugging. And down here we're going to say I <clears throat> is equal to I divided by five point seven semicolon. If I start turning, it's a nice sweep all the way to the end. So we scale it nicely. It's very nice. <clears throat> 